Hey fellow SweetScript developers, Eric here. Every week I host a live Ask Me Anything for members of the Sustainable SweetScript community. And once a month I open that up to the public as well. And as I was collecting questions for an upcoming AMA, uh, several people asked me about my developer journey or my backstory, if you will. And I realized I've never shared that. I've never shared the full shape of my career. Uh, and I thought maybe it's time to do that. Um, it's now a long enough career that it would have dominated the, the whole AMA session. So I thought I would record and share my story separately and also try to maybe tease out a few lessons that I've learned along the way. Now, I mentioned I do these AMAs every week for the Sustainable SuiteScript Slack community. I am only able to produce the free NetSuite content that I do, this channel included, thanks to the members of that community. So if you have been uh, looking to accelerate your SuiteScript learning, or to find a sense of community as a NetSuite developer, or just to show your support for this channel, you can find out more about joining us in the community on my website. That link is in the description. Once upon a time, there was a 16 year old boy who was so bored in geometry class that he was reading the instruction manual for his TI-82 calculator. <laughs> and I found in that manual that it was programmable with the basic programming language. Um, I didn't know anything about code or writing programs or software at the time. This was my very first exposure to code and programmable things. Uh, so I began to program my calculator to do my math homework for me. Uh, I would program the, the models or the, you know, algorithms, the theories, uh, into programs on the calculator and have it do, you know, solve the story problems or, or whatever for me. Um, I never thought of code as a career at that point. I didn't know anyone else who wrote code. Uh, I didn't know anything about the software engineering industry. But for the rest of high school, I would program my calculator to do my math homework, physics, uh, all of that sort of stuff. And I did that all the way through high school. And when I went to university, uh, I went to the University of Nebraska to study electrical engineering um, and still had no, no thought of code as a career, but I loved computers, I loved games, I loved, you know, electronics. So uh, I studied electrical engineering, and in the first few years of that study, I did have to learn, to start learning C to program microcontrollers. Uh, I had to learn the Unix operating system, the Bash shell, uh, things like that, but I still had no concept of software as a career or a job. They were just tools and skills that I was learning to do a real engineering job. Um, and in my third year, sometime in the middle of my third year of, of college, I really just fell out of love with electrical engineering as it got more technical, more into electromagnetics and statistics and uh, fabrication processes. I really just was not interested. I lost all the interest, uh, but I didn't want to waste all of that coursework. So <clears throat> I went to an advisor um, asking about what sort of transition I might be able to make without throwing out all the work I had already done. And uh, they actually told me that I could add a double major in computer engineering. And then I was almost done with the electrical half of that. Um, so I took an extra year, I took a fifth year of college and added a whole bunch of computer uh, engineering classes. So a lot of hardware, uh, but also real proper software engineering classes. Uh, I started learning Java and PHP and C++ 
um, and actually taking, you know, software engineering courses, the principles of software engineering and how to organize and run a team and manage a project and things like that. Um, so I added that double major and, uh, that led to part-time jobs, writing code and internships in the summers and, uh, graduated with the double, the two bachelor's degrees and took that to, uh, get a job at a very large, very corporate, uh, government contractor. And my first couple of years of that, I was writing Java Enterprise Edition, um, the heaviest object-oriented uh, or class-oriented programming that you might imagine uh, for the Department of Defense for uh, American for the United States Marine Corps. Uh, I was supporting their mobile command center project at the time. And uh, what I learned there was definitely the importance of engineering rigor, of process, uh, things like the importance of code review and, um, and just the process of, of testing and automated testing, uh, things like that, quality control uh, in these very important production systems where literally lives are on the line and seconds matter a whole lot. Um, and I worked on that for two years, including an overseas deployment, supporting active duty forces in dangerous places. Um, and when I came back from that, I was put on a NASA project um, with a really interesting, it was a really interesting pilot project actually. Um, so this would have been 2010 or so, 2011, 2011. And, uh, this was a, a, a unique pilot program. Uh, at the time, most of these projects in the government contracting space were all these massive years long, dozens of people, waterfall projects. And so. This uh, new project I got put on was actually a pilot of three developers working on a scheduling application to um, plan out optimal launch windows for satellites and rockets and things like that. Uh, and there was only three of us, and we wanted to operate in a Scrum or Agile uh, procedure process. So. We were piloting this out. We got to run two week sprints and talk with our users every sprint, demonstrate, deliver production ready code to them. And this is like unheard of in the, the contracting space at that time. And it was fantastic. In six months, we delivered a complete uh, project to them when usually contracts are five years, 10 years, 15 years uh, before the code gets to production. It was wild. Um, that was, I, my job was working on the front end, writing action script, uh, the flex framework, Apache flex. So that was my first exposure to the front end, working on the front end really. And, uh, and to an ECMAScript derivative action script is similar to JavaScript. It's based on the ECMAScript standards. So that was my first exposure to a JavaScript like language, um, but I loved it. I loved that small team. I loved the scrum process. Um, and I loved the project too. Loved the client, uh, but it was just a pilot. So six months later we delivered and that contract ended and wrapped and I never heard anything about it again. And I got moved to an, another NASA project and this was a 10 year contract. So my code wasn't going to see users or production for 10 years. Uh, and that just seemed crazy to me. Uh, and it was another front end project. And what I learned from working with ActionScript and in that flex environment, uh, while I loved the project and the teammates, 
and the client, I did not love working in the front end. Nobody wants me to work in their front end, especially me. I do not like um, working in that space. I love working on the automation, the process, the back end. Uh, that's where I really enjoy working. Uh, but I got moved to another front end role working in actually an Oracle framework, and I don't even remember what it's called now, but uh, I hated it. I, I hated this new role, this new project. I didn't want to wait 10 years to see my code uh, get to the users. Um, and so I started looking for a change and I found uh, 360 Cloud Solutions. I was living in Phoenix at the time and through a recruiter found this very small NetSuite consulting firm. This was my first exposure to business, like business process, business administration. Definitely my first exposure to ERP, CRM, all of those fun acronyms to NetSuite, certainly. And uh, to JavaScript as well. I hadn't written any, had never written a single line of JavaScript to that point in my life, in my career. Uh, so I really flung myself in the deep end at 360. Uh, but I was, I was the 17th employee, the seventh developer there. So very small coming from a company of 65,000 employees, I think to a company of, of 17 was a wild transition. Um, but I got to really stretch my legs there. I got a ton of freedom and latitude from the leaders there. I got to see a wide range of clients and projects and responsibilities. Um, we got to, I, I progressed from being a developer to a lead developer to a development manager. Uh, so I got to see pretty much the full scope of kind of a developer's career path or, or one career path for a developer at multiple levels of the organization. And it was fantastic. I loved, uh, I loved the company. I loved the team. Um, I really loved the manager position. I knew nothing about leading or managing people in a team setting other than maybe some holdovers from sports, uh, growing up, but I learned and I loved it. I loved the process development. I loved growing the team, um, designing operations, things like that, uh, helping people grow their skills, expand their careers, progress in their career paths. I loved all of that. Um, we got to double, we think we more than doubled the team while I was doing that. We went from seven developers to almost 20, I think 18 at one point. Uh, while I was there. So really interesting time to, to be sort of in charge of growing this development operation. Tons of fun, made lots of great colleagues and friends from that experience. And four years into that, so this would be 2015, 2016, uh, four years into that, there was kind of an executive shakeup, if you will. And that seemed like a good opportunity for me to go out on my own. I had my experience there learning NetSuite and SuiteScript at a time in 2012 when there were just no resources out there. There was NetSuite's forum, and that was about the only learning tool that we had, the only community there was, aside from the people sitting in the room with me. And it was really difficult. It took months for me to even get comfortable with NetSuite, with SuiteScript, with JavaScript. It took months before I even felt comfortable on my own, probably six months. And I wanted to make it easier for people uh, than I had it. And that was sort of, that planted the seed for what would become Stoic Software. And yeah, 2016, there's this, again, this like leadership shakeup at 360. And I felt that was a good opportunity to to cultivate that seed uh, and start Stoic Software, go out on my own. And um, in that first year, 2016, I gained a lot of momentum and started to build an audience, but uh, almost no revenue <laughs> came in from, from that effort, which is normal in a first year business. Um, 
but I made up the money writing code on contracts, contract positions. And that's just not what I wanted to be doing. It's still not what I want to be doing, but um, I wanted to keep uh, building that audience, making content, again, making it easier for people to learn SweetScript. And I think in about after about a year of doing that, uh, Zone, Zone & Co. approached me. I had a friend from 360 start working at Zone & Co. And then through him, I forget, I forget exactly how the connection started, but uh, I met with Zone, leaders at Zone, and took a position there. And I expected to be working on the, at that time, the brand new or the nascent a zone billing product. But once I got started, that's actually not, they needed me to do something else. Uh, and I won't go into all the details because they're not super relevant, but I was not using the skills, using or developing the skills that I wanted to at that time in that role. Um, I felt pretty isolated. Um, and I did not do good work or even average work. I was a bad employee. <laughs> I was not a good employee there. And I was fired from a SweetScript developer position. And after about 11 months, they fired me. And I was never more relieved. <laughs> and I'm sure they weren't either. Um, or they, I'm sure they were also relieved. Uh, I think right now at the time I'm recording this, everyone in the NetSuite space knows Zone & Co. They are an absolute behemoth in the NetSuite space doing just fine without me. Um, but it's, I mean, overnight, this shadow that had been haunting me that entire year just evaporated, vanished. And um, I went, at, went, at, went back at Stoic Software um, Making more videos, um, Tim Dietrich and I launched the Sweet Script Stories podcast, and I was able to land a couple really important uh, clients as well. Uh, I, I really focused in on my coaching program, which gained a lot more traction than it did, you know, two years prior, and that would, you know, eventually turn into the sustainable Sweet Script community. Um, and once again, after about a year of that, uh, maybe two years, after two years of doing that, so we're into like 2019, getting into 2020, um, I started to attempt to pivot from coaching individuals to advising teams. So a little more of a strategic layer, getting back to that operations design that I really loved from, say, 360. Um, and it just went nowhere. It went nowhere at all. I got maybe one or two clients over the course of 18 months and yeah, it just went nowhere, nowhere at all. And I started to get angry, started to get resentful. I didn't want to be writing code. I was getting frustrated, feeling like I was answering the same question over and over and over. And yeah, I got really resentful in my professional life. My personal life suffered greatly for that. Um, Somewhere in there, 2019, my son was born. Um, and so as I was going through this pivot and, you know, like I said, it was not going well. Um, someone important in my life had to tell me that things were not working. Something had to give and it was not going to be my family. So, uh, 2021, maybe? 2020, it's all blurring together. Uh, I stepped away. I, I effectively shut down the business, stopped making videos, left the professional Slack channel. Uh, I, I put NetSuite on a shelf in a closet and shut the door, locked it behind me. Um, and I stayed at home full time. I was a full time stay at home dad raising my two year old son at the time. So uh, this is getting into 2021. And I spent the year completely away from NetSuite. I had been knocked down for sure. 
And um, in the middle of that year, 2021, I had a good friend from 360 who started working at an end user called Compass, very large public real estate brokerage that uses NetSuite. Um, so we started talking about that a little bit, but nothing came of that. And then late in the year, uh, I decided it was time to get back to work. So I started interviewing with them. Uh, and the first interview did not go well. And they did not want, they had no interest in, in hiring me. Um, I, had, I was so rusty. I had not, again, I had not logged into NetSuite, written any code at all, let alone NetSuite code. For the better part of a year, I was totally focused on, you know, being a parent and just being a person, uh, not a sweet script developer. So, um, yeah, that interview did not go well and they didn't want, they didn't call me back. They didn't want any further interviews. Uh, but I mentioned, I had a friend there who I'm very fortunate that he spoke up for me convinced them to give me a second chance. I prepared much better for the next interview. And yeah, I made it long story short, made it all the way through the inter interview process, took a position at Compass as a NetSuite developer. And there I was on this very small team again. There were I think eight of us in total split across two separate teams. Um, then we, I got to work with some incredible teammates there and it was a very low pressure environment, but we were working on really difficult technical challenges, massive amounts of data and transactions moving through multiple different systems, lots of integrations, um, all funneling into and out of, of NetSuite as the core ledger. Um, and when I got there, it was very manual processes. There was no, no automated testing. Um, there was, they were branching and doing code review and things like that, but there were no standards for code review. There was no deployment automation, anything like that. So I really got to flex some of my operational muscles there and build automated pipelines and start uh, unit testing and things like that. Um, but a uh, truly fantastic team to work with. Very grateful. I got to work with each and every one of them. Um, I did not love the organization as a whole. And so about two years into that, coming into like 2023, uh, Salto approached me and they wanted to reboot the Sweet Script Stories podcast. They wanted to launch this free educational platform, which would become Salto Leap today. Uh, and they wanted me to write and deliver the, the flagship or one of the flagship uh, courses for that, which became my SDF course, which you can still take over there. Um, and that was the, I, because I wasn't in love with sort of the larger organization at Compass, this felt like a real, I had been thinking about how do I get back on my own again? How do I go out on my own again? This was a great, felt like a great opportunity to do that. And so I did, took Salto up on their offer, uh, not as an employee, but as a, as a partner, essentially. So I rebooted Stoic Software, partnered with Salto. So you have them to thank as one of the massive reasons that I'm here today, still making NetSuite content. And so, yeah, I made the, throughout 2023, I made the course, made a bunch of Salto content, um, and rebooted the sustainable SweetScript community, which is pretty, which pretty much brings us to today. Uh, I still, I have the SweetScript stories podcast is still going. Um, the sustainable SweetScript community is here. I'm still making Salto content as well. So, um, now today we're just. I'm, I'm managing the, the community, sustainable sweet script community, trying to bring together NetSuite developers who want to accelerate their learning, support each other, share ideas, um, just find and build 
a sense of community in this very small, sometimes very quiet, um, isolating niche that we all find ourselves in. Uh, so that pretty much brings us to today of what I'm doing right now. And as I was like writing this and reflecting, I wanted to try and pull out some lessons perhaps that I've learned along the way. And I think one of the first ones is that don't stay in a job that you hate. Uh, if you have any choice at all, I think that we all spend so much of our very short time on this planet working at, or at work that it's, we spend way too much time at work to resent that time. Um, and that resentment for me only festered and built and grew and spilled over into all the other areas of my life and no business is worth my life. Um, the second one, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face. Uh, and life has unlimited punches to throw at you. I certainly didn't dodge all of them if I dodged any of them. Um, nothing that I have built has gone according to the plan I had when I started. Uh, you've heard my story. I have been knocked down a whole bunch uh, repeatedly. And sometimes it takes me a long time to get back up. But I do. I keep getting back up because I don't, I don't actually think there's another choice. Um, every time I get up, I, things look a little different. I feel a little different. I am different. I do different things. Uh, but I don't know what staying down would look like. I don't think that's a real option any of us have. Uh, we have to do something. We have to make money, right? We have to support ourselves and our family. So I don't know that there are any other choices to make other than realizing that you are going to get knocked down and getting good at getting back up. So to do that, uh, I think the third like main lesson I've learned is to diversify my identity. Uh, my whole life, I have been achievement focused. My self-worth was measured by my achievements. Uh, good grades, winning trophies, competitions, being the best at whatever it was I was doing, the best sweet script developer, the best baseball player, the best student, uh, whatever it was. But the more, the older I got, the more responsibilities got put on my shoulders or that I accepted. I shouldn't to say it like it's something that happened to me. I was involved. But the more responsibilities I had, the more ridiculous it gets to try and be the best at all of them. There's no way to be the best NetSuite developer because there are so many different niche definitions of best. There's no way I'm going to be the best YouTuber in this tiny, tiny niche. That's not possible. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Mr. Beast just hit 300 million subscribers. There aren't 300 million NetSuite developers in existence and maybe never will be. Uh, in summation. So uh, I, have, I had to learn and do a lot of work and still do a lot of work to diversify my identity. Um, I am more than a sweet script developer. I am more than the videos that I make, the podcasts I do, the Stack Overflow answers. I'm more than my code. I am more than my business. Uh, life is going to punch me in the face again, repeatedly, as it does for everybody. So diversifying my identity, measuring my self-worth by way more than just my work has been the best way to strengthen my jaw for that next punch that life has to throw. Thanks for listening to my story. Keep learning. Keep sharing. I'll see you next time.